This is Pastor Nathan. Welcome to the Sitting With It podcast. Each week I sit down with someone from my congregation to discuss the past Sunday's sermon. I hope this helps all of us to go deeper with the sermon, thinking about it, digesting it, and living it out in our lives. Let's get into it. So on Sunday, we had Franco come and preach, um, and Franco was my parents' pastor, actually, for around 10 years or so, okay. and then was a missionary in the um, Dominican Republic, I believe it was, and is now our stewardship um, advocate from Everance. And so he did not request to preach on this passage. Um, I assigned it to him. <laughs> sort of. I mean, I gave him the ability to say no, but uh, I reached out to him and ha- said, hey, I'd love to have you come preach. He's been in his role, I think, about nine months now. And we usually try to have somebody from Everence come out every once in a while. And uh, so the passage was Second Chronicles um, chapter 3 and 4, uh, which is primarily just the instructions, not even the instructions, it's the description of them building the temple. And so there's a lot of gold going on. There's a lot of uh, furnishings going on. And I thought he did a a good job of kind of taking that. And then essentially he talked about his own reaction kind of against the extravagance, all the spending and uh, just the resources used for this building. Um, But then kind of looked into it a little bit more of what does this extravagance actually symbolize or, or why are they doing this? And kind of looking at Solomon's reverence for God and Solomon's humility um, in building the temple and then helping us think about what does it look like for us to give God our best. So I wonder, as you were listening to the sermon, as you've been thinking about it, what maybe stood out to you or what are some of the key takeaways for you? The, you talked about the extravagance and all the gold and foreign, foreign wood and things that they brought in. And I think he brought out something that I kind of think about when we think about all this extravagance that they put in and and like why did they need to go to all this this expense or whatever I I think he talked about being frugal and f- whether I forget the exact words he used but something about a frugal bone or frugality and I think that's something that resonates with me but then he also talked about that how could you not um a little later on, he talked about how could you not do something for a God who is so cannot be contained and is so amazing and powerful. Um, so I think, you know, to go along with that, he, you know, he then talked about some other things um, pertaining to, you know, that no matter what they did and how extravagant they made it, it would never live up to the the person that he is and i think um that is something that you know he is he is powerful and mighty and that nothing no, no, no structure will ever contain him and he talked about how they can he can't even be contained by the heavens um so i think that's something that really stuck out to me yeah, what do you think as you reflect on them building this structure to kind of symbolize and even contain the presence of God, but it can't? Uh, what do you think, what makes that stand out to you, the, the greatness of God, and, and then the human effort of trying to honor God, even if that effort isn't going to be enough? Well, I think you talked about that closer to the end, too, and about how just having the gratitude for God and how great, how great and powerful he is that no matter what, no matter how much, you know, how can you, how can you not give the best for God, um, is, is, you know, one of the things he talked about. And so even though you cannot, they still tried their best to, to make something that, that was, worthy of him being present in yeah their willingness to kind of do their best and give their best even though they knew this isn't going to be enough right but they still were willing to go go through with it yeah as and and go as far as they could to try and give their best effort to 
for, for something that, you know, would never be good enough for him. What are maybe some of the other takeaways or the things that stand out to you or you think that you'll remember from, from what was said? I think it was a practical challenge at the end where he um, asked us to do a gratitude journal. And uh, so the last couple of days I've been trying to think about that. I, I didn't actually write anything down, but I've been thinking about it for the last two days and um, trying to come up with a list of things. And I mean, a couple of things that I've come up with was a gratitude for uh, my heritage of faith that I've had through generations going back, you know, and many of them worshiping here at Swamp. And just some of that reminded me of that, that I didn't, you know, necessarily think of that very often, but it reminded me of that. Um, and gratitude for uh, a congregation who's willing to take and disciple me um, and my family. Um, so that is something that I'm grateful for. Um, I think I could go on for a fairly long time of all the things I'm grateful for, but I think it was something that I would think about it, but maybe didn't put it into the perspective that he gave us, you know, the gratitude and, you know, to God for the things he, he has given to us. And then relating that to being able to give back, um, and, um, the ways we can give back and how that changes, um, as we grow in our faith, as we grow, uh, as we age, um, and, and how that changes in different, in different places in your life. I mean, you know, um, you know, he's, he's our Everence, uh, representative. And, you know, when you think of Everence, you usually think of, of our resources that God has given us. And, you know, when we, when I, when we first started out, we maybe couldn't give monetarily the way we can now. And as you grow, you, things change in your life and you're, you're maybe, um, the way you manage your resources changes and you have the ability to give more resources, but that, I mean, that's not what exactly what all God is always looking for. He's, he's looking for whatever we have and, and just the way he can take whatever we give and magnify it because not everyone can give monetarily the way others can. And, but he takes each gift and, and makes it great. Um, no matter what you have. Yeah. When you think back over your life and as you've gotten older, um, and that, and you mentioned how that kind of has, has changed a little bit, how you think about giving back financially as well as in other ways. Um, what would you say is maybe the biggest change that you've experienced in your own life around gratitude and generosity as you've gotten older? I think the more grateful you are, you're willing to give back. Um, grateful for the things God had given you, whether it be monetarily or whether it be people um, who come into your life and speak into your life. There's been, I could probably give you at least a handful of people from Swamp that have spoken into my life and they've made me more grateful for where I am or what I, you know, and um, have just come alongside me and said, you know, here, you know, this, this is, these are some things or, you know, have, have said statements that make me think about things differently. Um, and just, you know, like I said, the, the church congregation that has, um, gifted me things or, or just words that have, tremendously changed my thought um and i think i've been blessed by having be, being surrounded by some of those people yeah it's like as teenagers this is what you, as you're talking it's making me think as teenagers we like want to prove ourselves right and so we feel like we have to like 
do this all ourselves and we have to like accumulate whatever we need and we have to put the effort in and then the older we get the more we realize how much others have shaped us and how much who we are is actually the result of what we've been given both by God but also by others which then makes us maybe a little bit more willing to give back to others as well instead of holding everything for ourselves right and it gives you you know like I said, it it may it may be a word or words that these this person or these people ha- would never even think would change you, and but yet you take it to heart and you use it. And um, I think for me, it's been something that I've you know grateful for what I have and the people that I've been surrounded with, and then grateful for the time that I have to be able to go help people. And if you would talk to Katie, um, she would say that I'm willing to help anyone, sometimes more than I help her. Um, But um, it's something that I didn't always think that I enjoyed, and but it's something that I've grown into, and that's something that I do cheerfully now. And... um, just thinking about as we, you know, you talked about being a teenager. I think one of the things that I think back on now that I'm a little bit older is, you know, that I thought I had to know it all and, you know, and so grateful for what I was taught by others and then using that to grow and and grateful for those words that they used to, make me into who I am now and just a different perspective on the things I could have done differently. (laughs) Um, and that I didn't know it all back then. (laughs) (laughs) So I think that's something I always think about when we talk about, you know, um, we have a fair number of younger, um, like, uh, teenage to high school kids that work for us and try and, relay to them like you know some of the things that maybe I regretted that maybe I wish I would have done you know differently in my life yeah and you mentioned too of kind of at one point uh you maybe didn't enjoy as much when you were helping or serving or when people needed something and and you were the one who had to be there but as you've gotten older it's become more of a, a cheerful thing something that you enjoy giving back in that way and that was something in the sermon that he talked about of how Solomon um, kind of built the temple out of out of compulsion almost um, and and he says in second uh, Chronicles 2 about uh, he we, we're doing this because it's the everlasting ordinance of the Lord right God has ordered us to do this and I know for me that was something of I I would think of if you're doing something under compulsion you're not doing it cheerfully right and so like like we do things cheerfully because we want to do them but this idea that that we can be compelled to do something and still also enjoy it uh and then thinking about generosity or giving back as like like we god is so great and mighty and magnificent and has given us has blessed us with so much that we are compelled to give back but that doesn't mean that we do it like half-heartedly or or you know um and and that like there can kind of be two different uh, like opposing ways of thinking about giving right of either like i only give what i want to give and then it's more primary like i have to always be thinking about well do i want to give this or do i not want to give this or we give out of obligation but kind of this combination in between where we give out of obligation but also cheerfully yeah and i think you know and maybe different at different times in your life and you know now and you know i get excited and you know, I always wish that I could give more. There's always more more places that would be willing to accept gifts. And I wish, you know, and it's something that as, you know, we have um, managed our resources well and we're able to give more than we used to. Um, it's still there, you know there's still many more places that would be willing to accept gifts and um i wish i could give to them all but you you just can't and and i along with that though i think you know god we need to remember that it it's not ours and i think that's something that i need to re- 
remind myself regularly of that it's it's God's and we need to give to him what is his and um and you know um need to remember that uh he will magnify no matter what what no matter how small the gift that he will magnify that gift uh franco had said something about the the alabaster jar and and the woman who spilled the perfume and about how you know maybe that wasn't the best but uh god you know jesus spoke and said she gave what she could and she you know she knew what she was doing and so that is you know that's something that we need to remember we need to give what we can where we can and and god will use it and magnify it as as he can yeah and that temptation or tendency to judge what others give based off of our own standards uh which is what the disciples were doing and that jesus is like no, like she, she's doing a, a good thing here. And uh, Franco even, it, I, I've never heard somebody talk about it quite the way he did, where he actually allowed a question in how he talked about it of like, should she really have done that? And that still maybe is a question that could be asked. But this idea of the whole sermon that like we give our best and we maybe could all question, like, should we have done that? Should we have given in that way? But God will magnify the gift. God will use our best to further his kingdom uh, even if at times there's questions of uh, like, you know, maybe the disciples question was, was accurate. Should that money have been used for the poor? And Jesus says, that's not the right question here. She's giving, she's giving her best. So I wonder, as you think back about the sermon, are there, what are maybe questions you have or uh, areas that you would, would push back a little bit on things that he, that he shared? I don't know that I have a whole lot of pushback. I guess, again, I just, you know, it's, I struggle with the scripture and them speaking about all the gold and, you know, just the frugality of the, you know, maybe that's just a little bit how I am. And, um, and, and him just speaking to that each of us have our own interpretation and that our life experiences are going to change the way we look at it. And we can't let that taint the, the message God is trying to give us, um, even though we may not think that that some of the things that they thought were necessary, um, are necessary. Um, and that, um, that he is willing to use no matter what we, we give, he is willing to use it. Yeah, and so then as you think about, and you already mentioned kind of the gratitude journal and some of the ways that you give back, but as you think about that then in your own life, what, is that, what does it look like to live that out? I think it's, you know, just as we go through our weeks and months that it's not always easy to be, to have gratitude always. And sometimes we forget to, forget to remember to be grateful and um i know i forget who it was but someone once told me you know it's it's hard to be hateful when you're grateful and um so i think you know just trying to remember that you know as i did it for a couple of days here but try to remember to continue that um and i think it was a good challenge he gave us to try and continue that till thanksgiving and and on. Um, and even if it's just once a week that you sit down and try and write something down or whether you try and do it every day, um, it's something that we need to remember. And I think is a challenge for me that I, you know, sometimes I get caught up in what everything that's going on and forget to be grateful for where we've, what we've been given and where we're at right now. Well, thank you for joining me today and for all of your time reflecting on the sermon and thinking about it and sharing here. And uh, I'm sure that'll be impactful and meaningful for others too. Thanks for inviting me. <laughs>